what suggestions then do we have for this first one? This first one's probably quite straightforward, though, isn't it? Andrew, what did you do for the first one? Um, I did um, um, six on top. Yep. Um, R equals one on the bottom. Yep. Bracket then. So you wouldn't put N here because this has to refer oh, sorry, to this R. bit R. Yeah, now, yeah. I know I told you to put brackets, but you don't need to put brackets if it's one single thing. If it's yeah. like R plus something, then it requires brackets. If it's just one thing by itself like this, yeah. no brackets are actually required. Here, That's fine. If you do put brackets, you're not going to have done anything wrong, but we're trying to save ink and we're trying to save time. So two little lines might cost us 0.3 of a second or something like that. Marco, what did you get for this second one here? Yep. R equals one on the bottom. Yep. R plus six. And this one obviously does require brackets for that to be done like this. There must be another way that we could have written this one, though. I did R equals seven to twelve. So you did R equals seven, finished it at twelve, and just and just R. That's probably how I would have thought of this one. Um, but it's nice to see that you can do it in these two different kinds of ways as well, okay? Um, this one should be pretty easy because it's very similar to one on the previous you page. Do, oh, yeah. You said R equals 2 yeah. and then... Six yeah. Um... No, because when you then put three in, but when you put three in, because you would be putting three in, you would then have six plus one and a half, you'd get seven and a half, which doesn't appear in here, okay? Can you make it go up by twos? You can't make it go up by twos. Um, so this needs to be left as a four. No, but even six would only get you a nine. You're right, if you wanted it to go up by twos, you'd have to deal with it in the formula instead. Yeah. Uh, you'd have to put like a two in front of the R. But then if you put two in front of the R and then you're dividing it by two, you're basically back to one of the other types of ones that we've got already, okay? So this one here, N. the sum of N squared. R, R squared, oh, that's okay, from R equals one to six. Yep. If we wanted to write this in a different way, Andrew, you did write this in a different way. The sum of, what did you have? Um, R minus one squared. R minus one squared from R equals to seven. seven. Yeah, you've adjusted by the fact that we've started it here at two and finished at seven by subtracting one from the formula that we've got here. Um, what about this one, Theo? What did you have for this? Um, R equals one to eight. Yep. And the formula is three R plus two. Three R plus two. How did you generate three R plus two? Um, well, I, I saw that the, the common difference is three. Common difference is three. Yeah, you need to add 2 to get it there. So this 3r plus 2, if I said it was 3n plus 2, it's the nth term. Yeah, good, Marco. It's the nth term of that series. And so you could also, again, adjust this in a different way. If you wanted to start from r at a different point, we could adjust it. Um, Andrew, I know, is going to have started from r equals 2. Yeah? yeah, and gone up to 9. And inside the brackets, you would have done... 3 open brackets, n minus 1. r minus okay. 1. You love saying n minus 1 instead. <laughs> And plus two, and then, and then you'd want to simplify this, so it would be three r minus one instead. Okay, and then for this one that we've got here, let's see if we can do this one as well. Yeah, I would have personally, I would just work out what the nth term is because that's just kind of a familiar way. So, what is the nth term of this, Marco? Uh, minus 10R. Yeah. So I would have written that as 35 minus 10R. Obviously, it's equivalent to yours, but it just in maths, we don't tend to like to start a sentence with a negative. This obviously requires bracketing. So it depends. Yeah, lots of the time we like to put the letter first. But if there is something that is a negative, minus 10R plus 35, mathematicians just think that this looks more elegant. And I agree that it looks more elegant because, first of all, we're using less ink because we're not having to write plus 35, that's implied just over here. It just kind of looks a bit, a, a little bit easier to read. It's not wrong. This is absolutely not wrong, but you wouldn't see this in like a formal exam question or in a formal paper. You'd see this kind of thing instead. 
and r equals one on the bottom. So I guess just a quick quick note on how we say this. I would say the sum of 35 minus 10r from one to four, or from r equals one to four. So you say the sum of this bit, and then you give some of that extra information about those things that we've got there. Okay, really, really good. I'm impressed with those ones you came up with. So we're now gonna have a look at sums of ones, okay? Because we wanna be able to see, are there quick ways of doing sums of certain things? So I'm hoping we're gonna really easily spot that the sum of this series, well, we're gonna have, this series is gonna be one. What would be the next thing I'm adding to it? Just one, because there's nothing here to substitute in. It's just saying every time, add on one. So be one times n. Good, and I'm doing that. I'm doing that n times, because I'm going to keep doing that until the ticker goes up, until I have done it n times. And one times n is just n. n. Simple, right? So the sum of 1 from r equals 1 to n is just n. Now, you can probably predict what this one is going to be. But this time it's going to be 5 plus 5 plus 5, and that's going to happen n times. And if you've got five, n lots of 5, it's 5n. And I don't even think I need to write this one out, but what do you think the sum of k from r equals 1 to n is? Nk. Nk, or probably we're going to just write kn in this case. I feel like whatever you're saying, I'm saying the opposite, but I'm not doing it to wind you up. I'm just saying we probably would write KN. It's normally, it's normally alphabetical order. And also in this context, can you tell me something? I mean, K is going to be a constant, right? And we normally put the constant as the coefficient of N in this, in this particular this case that we've got here. So now if we have a particular part of a series that has just got a 1 in it, we know how to be able to... Um, to evaluate it, we just multiply it by n. So don't forget this, because sometimes people just remember it as like a rule. Do you know why it's true? Because you could write it out n times and, and, and that would happen, okay? We are now gonna have a look at sums of integers, but I'm gonna split this as a separate video.